like in the deep, deep, deep humidity, like half swimming, you know, when you're like, you're not quite swimming, but you're sort of half swimming. And then, uh, yeah, today we got hit with this, like this, this like Mendocino weather. I'm not mad at it. Well, I actually just moved out of the city, but I'm, I'm in New York state and just, um, how excited we were that it was going to be in the eighties and just yeah. how bizarre that is to talk about now, you know, that when I was a kid, it, that was hot. That was hot when I was a kid. Yeah. This is just uh, how things are going now. I guess this is just life. And then we're going to in 10, 10 to 15 years, we're going to long for the days of uh, 95. Burn me down, man. No, I, 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 uh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, give me the, give me a little breeze. Give me a little, like, dry it out you know i'm going out of the out of the house so like if it, it's gonna go off the wi-fi you know what i'm saying if it, if it does anything funny you know funny business i'm just gonna i'm gonna walk a little bit do you find you uh uh interview better when you're walking not probably not but it's just so nice out are you uh like when you're writing do you do you walk oh i walk yeah i mean i got i got this guy so like we we uh we're out a lot. We're we hit. We're hitting the streets, you know. Who's Who's that? That's Marty Morris. What's his story? Hey, he's a friend, you know. He's a good friend. Roommate, yeah, my pal. Kind of a deadbeat, though. Didn't, not, a little not bit. Really Doesn't do much. Now I ain't washing no dishes. Have you been in Cincinnati your uh, your whole life? No, you know I've been here. Um, is it you're not using this footage, are you? Because it's gonna be no, hella no, chaotic. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, I, I I've been here three quarters of my life. Three three quarters and, and half a score of my three life. Three non consecutive quarters? Right. Right. I was I moved when I was like twenty to the bay. And then I moved back when I was like thirty. Now I'm now I'm now I'm ooh, ooh. Hey. I'm actually from the Bay Area originally. Okay, so I, where I will, what part? I will I will not let a hella go by uncommented. Hold on. <laughs> what part are you from? I'm from Fremont, from the East yeah. Bay. Went to school in Santa Cruz. End um, of the line, baby. Yeah, although although I mean it's technically still the end of the line, but they have uh, exp- expanded it now. There's another end of the line in ah, Fremont. Okay, the Automall Parkway stop. Uh, <laughs> Um, lifelong, uh, lifelong A's fan, which is, uh, as you can appreciate kind of, uh, miserable at the moment. I don't, I, I can't, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm bar- I'm bar- I'm barely privy. I hate to say Okay. It. but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just enough for me to keep, keep a little bit abreast of the politics, uh, sports pass by me. Although I do enjoy watching when I'm watching, you know? What brought you to SF and what brought you back? Well, you know, music, that sort of thing. Like, so we, you know, we had that um, Anticon label out there. Well, we we went out there to create it, you know. So that's pr- pretty much what brought me out. Be with, be around those guys and having a little community of weirdo music people. You know what I mean? What's the community situation like where you're at now? And and I guess like how important is that at this point? I think that it's very important. You know, I, I, I have a bit of a community. I feel like I'm maybe not the best at like I've, I've, lo- I mean, I guess we're getting, we're getting into some therapy territory, but you know, I have, I have trouble maybe integrating as much as I used to in, into community and stuff. Maybe I'm not as good as I used to be at, at being like, you know, at, at, at getting involved with things and people. Mm. And, um, but I think that's typical for, for yeah. people as you get older, you know, like most people by my age have like two kids, you know, and, uh, and are married and then divorced and then maybe married again. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like takes the place of of those kind of fraternistic communities that that we involve ourselves in in our 20s. 
New York specifically, it's it's you know it's a hard financially and and for a lot of other reasons a, a difficult place to live. So people just don't settle down there. It's going to be like d- just like right the 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 prices in the city are are going to basically stunt population growth. Uh, just you know. Um, and easy availability to contraceptives. Which is kind of the opposite problem when you think about it. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, anyway, yeah, no, I, I feel you. And I, I don't know if, if my, you know, if if my um, inability to to lock in is is um, city related or, or if it's more uh, just, uh, you know, just haven't figured out how to interact um you're talking just broadly like social social awkwardness and i guess i mean i yeah and relationship wise maybe i've had a couple that didn't you know work out and things like that um but uh i'm just being self-deprecating i'm okay but you know i i don't know why i'm not in in a more um you know settled whatever you want to call it situation and i mean look neither of my siblings have kids like they you know they both have partners right now but i i've had partners too but you know um yeah so i don't know what it is i think it's maybe generational to some extent and i'm not saying I, there's certainly a lot of people in my generation that are locked up but are locked in but uh, and locked up i suppose too but um like I said, I, I recently li- uh, left the city and like I, I bought a house and that's something that I just never thought was going to happen. There's just, I think there are certain things that our, there are a lot of things that our parents' generation took for granted that just don't seem feasible in the same way now. Yes. No, absolutely. And I, I mean, and some of that is financial, I think. Um, just, yeah. You know, they, they show you these charts on, social media and stuff about how the sort of, you know, minimum income has stayed the same as, as housing prices and all this stuff has gotten more expensive. I wonder too, if like there's something in your job that maybe can make sustaining a relationship difficult because like, and, 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 well, you know, you, you tour so much is probably a big part of it. That's true. I, although, you know, I, I also have spent, you know, like I, I really haven't toured that much in the last like five, six years. I used to a lot. So yeah, for sure. Like, um, you know, that used to be real hard and I had long stretches where I had no, 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 uh, relationships, but, um, you know, yeah, as, as the, the years have gone on, I've kind of started to tour a little less just cause it's harder. Um, what are you doing, man? Um, that's to Marty. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that certainly makes it hard when, when I'm doing that, but I don't know. Otherwise, I, I don't know. I just, maybe I, I don't go out that much or something, you know? I feel the same way. And in fact, like that's a, that's a part of why I ended up just kind of getting out of the city. It was just like, I, I, and the pandemic really drove us home of just like, oh, I'm not leaving my apartment the way I used to. What? Right. Why am I paying, you know, for the privilege of living here, basically? And not not even, you know, even beyond financially, like, I think the pandemic sort of showed us that it's kind of nice to have a little bit of, like, space, I don't know, and have a little, a little like, bit of your, your own maybe I just got, I got like isolation indoctrinated by the, by the pandemic, I think. And I haven't really changed my ways that much. A little, I mean, I go out sometimes, but not, you know, I'm also not in my twenties anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't drink either. So it's like, what do you go out every night and do? I don't know. I quit drinking a few years ago and I kind of had a similar, yeah. a similar experience. It dawns on you and, and you don't, when you're in it, you don't really recognize like, just how much of socializing as an adult is around drinking. Oh, I mean, almost all of it, I feel like, right? I mean, not all of it, but uh, much of it. When all the shutdowns and everything first started happening, I got concerned because I felt like I was a little 
I embraced it a little too much and I was a little too comfortable that, but that, you know, that, that I was, I have to sort of throw myself into social situations and it's, it's a little awkward and uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, like that, that sense of obligation was being taken away. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, yes, it, that didn't feel too crazy to me, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't like always out anyway. So I, and I had a partner at the time who I lived with. And so, you know, when you have that, you sort of fall into these, not always, but we kind of fell into a, you know, we don't go out much and kind of thing before the pandemic. So we just kind of kept doing that, but we, we kind of lived in terror. Like we didn't, we didn't like go out at all. Like, you know, we were like scared to leave the house, you know? Like wear a mask to walk the dog around the block. You know what I mean? Like that kind of shit. Anyway, not to relive that. To a certain extent, we're going to be reliving it probably for the rest of our lives. But I, I always, you know, I talk to people about this quite a bit and I'm curious to get your take on it. Um, I, you know, I, I was living alone in my apartment for, for all of that. And I wonder, I wonder what's the better scenario because obviously there's like, there there's pluses and minuses of both of them, but of uh, being like, being just completely alone and having to, you know, communicate with people over zoom or like basically being locked up with somebody else. That, neither grass is very green, to be honest. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know what the other way was, but it it was, it was, it was tough to be with somebody, but I also can, yeah, I can imagine that being alone could be worse even. I mean, yeah. Anytime that, that you don't have like broad communication with you know, a plethora of people, shit gets weird. You know I mean? That like the only examples of that we have are like this weird pandemic thing that we lived through or like people in prison, I guess certain <laughs> prisons, the isolation or like someone like, like, uh, when the, the Tom Hanks got, got moored on a desert Island. He seems to get stranded a lot in places. I thought you were going to say the time that he got stuck in the airport for, <laughs> Well, also that one, also that one, but there are people around on that one. That's true. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, how, I mean, were you, were you writing a lot during that period? Yeah. I mean, I was writing a bit, but not like, I would say like without, you know, having like varied experiences, you know, your mind can kind of get shut in a little bit. And from the, like, just the trauma of, like, the, the fucking fear, you know, how that sits on you. It's not, doesn't, like, stir the creative juices exactly. Um, so, I don't, I don't think I was super prolific during that period. I know some people, like, wrote their novel or whatever. Um, but I was already, you know, I already didn't have a day job, which is, I'm very fortunate about. So, it's not like all of a sudden I got to be home after usually being in, in some cubicle every day or whatever. I've heard you talk about this a little bit of, um, forcing is too strong of a word, but really figuring out how to write in those moments where, you know, maybe you just don't feel like it that day or, or the, the inspiration isn't, isn't necessarily coming, but of kind of, you know, forcing yourself to sit down and and do something. Yeah, I I think it's good to do that. I I I don't have, you know, I don't have a great um routine really. I used to be more like um would only do stuff when like the quote-unquote inspiration hit or something, you know, like I think now I've gotten to the point where I I mind, you know, little moments inspiration hits and I'll, I'll write a little something down or, or, you know, maybe I'll write a little riff or something. Um, and then I can sit down any time and kind of comb through things and put things together and edit things and move things. You know what I mean? Like I, if I wanted to, I could keep regular work hours, but I don't, cause I don't know, this is a weird job and things come up. Like you got to, you know, whatever this, like we're doing a podcast or I got to do, uh, you know, work on a music video or, you know, like, so there's just all kinds of different things. It's, it's a varied lifestyle. So, but 
I sh what I should do, and what I was doing for a little while, is is locking myself in the studio for like three, four hours, you know, in the morning before I do anything else uh, without my phone, you know, and then, um, and then using the, the rest of the day, you know, afternoon or one say to, uh, you know, to do anything else I need to do like emails or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just to say that I think that it's good to have a practice like that, but I don't exactly have that ideal at the moment. Um, just a regular, you know, putting in hours, you know, I'm not doing that right now, but I try to stay abreast of, of things and, and not let too, too many days fall through the cracks. You know, you said something along the lines of wanting to do, uh, take a more traditional approach to songwriting for this record. What does that mean? Uh, well, I think coming off the heels of the last one, which was AOK -okay Ohio, like the way that that one is structured, you know, there are a couple songs that are more like, you know, pop song structure, reverse chorus and all that. But there's a lot of stuff that's like, you know, 30 seconds of the, of the like Hornet, Hornet, uh, uh, extinguisher guy calling me about, getting this hornet's nest off my house or whatever, you know, um, you know, just weird shit that like I was, which I like doing too, but like this, this album specifically, I was thinking more in terms of songs that can sit, sit on their own, you know, and be something, um, on their own without needing to be, you know, abutted, uh, by other songs to, to have context, you know what I mean? So yeah, just, just beginning, middle, end. That's all I mean. We were kind of bumping up against this earlier, but, um, you know, I get the sense that going through a breakup was a big, I don't know if motivator is the right word, but at least like a starting place for this album. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think that the album basically chronicles me dealing or, you know, this character who is, informed by me dealing with um the first you know like trying to figure out how to how to be alone and and what i wanted and what you know what's right and what she should have you know for, for the first couple of years after you know like that's kind of yeah that's what it is i mean it, it's kind of chronicling the ups and downs and the ins, ins and outs of, of those couple of years i think of change what what does that mean when you say trying to figure out how to be alone? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Just try, trying to know how to be without this person that, you know, you maybe you thought, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tease away from someone else. Like when you intertwine with someone, it's, it's, it's hard to peel away and, and feel, uh, you know, okay. You know, especially if you, you know, live with them and maybe there's some, a little bit of codependency going on and you go through, you go through a pandemic and you're, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot. And it sounds like, you know, it's that struggle of, um, fi you know, getting to a place where you're okay being alone, but then almost not trying not to get too comfortable being alone. Absolutely. And I know you know, I know other people like that. And I, I feel like I definitely have some of that. You know, I know people that have trouble being in relationships because and I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a big learning curve to know how to interact with, especially that to go deep with one specific person. Um, you know, I, I get certainly I get like, social anxiety, uh, just being out at a, you know, at an event or something um, or at a coffee shop where I know a bunch of people around, you know what I mean? Um, things like that. Um, but that's nothing I think compared to, ha you know, trying to share your like weird intimate home, you know, like solitary shit with something like, you know, to, to live with somebody and, and, and like have that kind of intimacy um, takes another level 
of like unclenching your 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 solitariness. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's a parallel to be drawn, but you know, I always I always say to people the best way to test a relationship is to move in with somebody. And I think like similar that the best way to know, you know, if if you can be in a band with somebody is to to is to go on tour with them and to hold yourself up in a in the back of a van because you know all of the bad shit is going to come out real fast no doubt no doubt but i think i think that's you know i i i wouldn't know from from experience but i think that's how you grow as a person you know is is just to no i'm just kidding i i i would know a little bit but um yeah i think that's how you grow is is by being sort of put up against that that kind of thing and having to talk through it and you know um and i think some people are better than others at it and other people you know i i just have gone through something recently somebody i was dating and this is a weird like non-communication thing and we had to sort of figure out how to you know neither of us wanted to like bring shit up you know what i mean and then we had to like figure out how to how to do that um so yeah then that's normal human stuff but i think it's it's good to be brave and and try to try to uh open up and and be close to people you know maybe there are ways in which you're completely comfortable being that open and transparent person when it comes to like the art that you're putting out in the world but actually just something that seems as simple as just sitting down and having a conversation with somebody maybe doesn't come as easily. Well, because it's, it's, it's simple and you just have to connect the dots. But like when I'm doing the art thing, I'm alone. So even though it ends up being shared with the world, I'm not thinking about that at the time, you know, at the time it's it, I'm by myself and I'm, and I'm kind of just like, letting the, the, the shit dribble out. That said, I have a lot of really cringy music that like, that I go back to later and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how did I put this out into the world? But like, it happens because you're alone in a room, you know what I mean? And, and you're just, anything, anything goes. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. It's kind of easier to do that for sure. And then bring another person in and then you got to not say all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you have to like, yeah, figure out how to be authentic in yourself, but also not be, you know, a jerk and, and consider what they would want to, I don't know, be privy to about you. And, you know, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of ins and outs, a lot, a lot of hoops. I wonder if it like can be difficult to reconcile with a partner where they, they can't, you know, they can't quite understand why you can be so naked and transparent in front of so many people, but just a one-on-one is so much more difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, transparent in front of people on a stage, you're you're not really with those people too. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, and also if you're singing, like, you know, you're singing songs you wrote by yourself. So yeah, I mean, yeah, but there's, there's, there's nothing that, you know, is equal to just, the intimacy that happens between two people when they're like, you know, really in it with each other, whether it's a romantic thing or it's, or it's family or whatever, you know, like when, when you sort of, especially living with somebody like, you know, even if it's your parents and your siblings or whatever, you know, you see everything and like, you have to be okay with them seeing everything. So like, it's a, you know, and when you get away from that, to reiterate what we just talked about earlier, when you get away from that for a long time, it's hard to go back to it. Would you describe making music as a like an overwhelmingly solitary experience? Uh, I would say for me, the generative moments are. But but then there's, you know, I mean, you, you can look at the credits and there's like 40 people that performed on that album and, you know, whatever. And so... Uh, yeah, that's it's it's it is and it isn't, you know, but like I feel like, yeah, the, the generative moments tend tend to be for sure. And, you know, that's what informs the rest in a way. When you say generative, you mean like the song writing specifically? Yeah, yeah. I'm more talking about songwriting, I guess. Yeah. 
um, and, you know, demoing and, you know, it's like how, how something's going to go. And then, yeah, once you're in with other people and still it's like, it, it'll be awkward for me to, I'll feel weird about singing my stuff in front of, you know, the people that are playing on the record too, you know, like, um, so I may, yeah, I may not really like, you know, one example that I, that comes to mind right now is like, um, a long, an old one, but like on like the song alopecia, I mean on the album alopecia, um, on the song good Friday, you know, no one had heard, you know, I didn't let anybody hear my, all my verses before I, you know, so I just like the first time anybody heard some, uh, some of that stuff was when I was in their booth and they were in the, in the control room. Um, you know, just cause it's, I didn't know how to do it in front of them. And then, um, you just do it. And then there, you know, so yeah, it's, and maybe that tells me that like, that's the stuff that I shouldn't be releasing to the world, <laughs> you know, that I should be able to sing something to, to, to people that I know before I, I let people that I don't know hear something, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you, you talked a little bit about, again, maybe this is too strong of a word, but you talked a little bit about regret from the standpoint of something being, like, like cringy, but is there ever regret around maybe too open about something that should be kept private? Well, that's really what I mean by cringy. So, yeah, lots of that. Um, and, yeah, just, like, yeah, just just little lines, and I'm just like, man, like, or, or or even even like ways of being, like like being too too animated in videos, or being too, you know, I get I, I get cringed from a lot of my old stuff. Um, try anything that's like trying too hard, basically. If it's if it doesn't like you know, if your whole being doesn't roll off the tongue, then it's like, don't do it. You know, I think, um, that's the rule of thumb, but it's hard, you know, when you're self editing, you know, like it's, it's often hard to know, you know, that's why like big pop stars have teams of people that are like, Nope, don't do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because they're image conscious and image concerned and like, you know, no one's going to tell me, you know, cut your hair, dude, you know, whatever. Like, I, no one really I don't have that kind of those kind of people around me really you know this is another line that's really difficult to walk is um, obviously you want to try hard you know and that you want to put your best thing out into the world but you don't want it to look like you're trying too hard <laughs> totally and and yeah I mean look when I right I mean I put so much effort into into certain aspects of, of song making but yeah, you, you want it to feel effortless and, you know, I don't know when you're, I feel like when you're in like, for instance, me right now talking to you, like if I was too stilted or too like, then it wouldn't come off well. I'm, I'm just trying to be natural and just talk, I'm, you know, I'm also pretty stoned. So it's kind of like, I don't have an option at the moment. I forgot about this and I was in the studio, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I think, I just think that, you know, anything you do that you put out in public, you want it to be like, I don't know. Then, then, the, then I see the other side of things too, where it's like, well, you know, we're only alive once. And like, if, if like that feeling or that, or, or that itch or that, or that, you know, to, to say something in a certain way comes to you, then it's like, why not? I don't know. I, I, I see both sides uh, like Chanel, you know, uh, of it. And, you know, because a lot of, a lot of what maybe what may, may make me cringe is me being, you know, raised up in, in the, in the way, in the place that I was. And I just mean in, in our culture, you know, and like the things that we see as being, you know, taboo or uncomfortable or embarrassing, you know, things like that. So at times in, in my life, I know I've kind of pushed at that a little bit for the sake of doing it for, for myself as a little bit of a, like, I, I just that I've, just that I've pressed at, at, pressed at the, pressed into the discomfort a bit of, 
you know, saying things or in a way that um, is a little, I don't know, not taboo. I don't think I'm saying taboo things, but just like, you know, a little out of what, of what. Out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know, I like the idea of that, but then when I go back in time and, and see stuff from the past, it, it makes me uncomfortable. So that's always a difficult relationship too, of, you know, somebody coming up to you and telling you how much they love this thing that you did. And all you can think about is, you know, <laughs> you can only see the bad in this thing that you put out into the world. Yeah. I mean, well, look, I, I also see some good, like they're like, I can, I can check out younger, some younger stuff that I've done and, and, and also feel like, Oh, like that's cool. You know, almost see yourself as a different person. That's cool. He thought of that or whatever, you know, but, but like, yeah, largely you hear the, the shortcomings or, or the, or the weirdness for sure. Do, do you feel like being stone makes you more honest? Do I seem extra honest? No, I'm just I'm curious, like how you know you 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 alluded to it earlier, and I'm I'm curious, like how that that interacts, how that like impacts the way you interact with others. I think that it tends to make me self conscious sometimes, or but you know sometimes I feel like this goes right with what we're talking about right now. Oh fuck, Marty, I don't have a bag. Um, I'm gonna have to come. I know where there's a bag. Uh. So, yeah, I mean, I think that sometimes I will, um, go on to get a bag, go on, uh, <laughs> sit in a restaurant. Sometimes in life you got to get a bag for the shit. You know? <laughs> so, sometimes they were looking at me, they were giving me the eye. Some, sometimes, um, when I get stoned, I will sort of see things in another light and it will help me edit and, and, and realize what what is natural and honest and what feels like a stretch you know what I mean and like I'm like I'm pressing too hard um, so yeah I think it can have in fact I, you know I think it's good just in terms of making music it's it's good to work um, in various I don't I don't mean you got to get high to make music for sure you, you don't but it's good to have various mind states um, when working I think like having a, um, you know, having the, like, just the dreamy, like, um, anything goes, no editing, like mind state is very good for the very, you know, seeds of things, you know what I mean? And then you definitely want to have that sort of editor mind state and you want to have the sort of productive person mind state, you know, and those all I think are appropriate for different parts of the process. You know, I think the simplest version of that for like, for me as, as a writer, the simplest version of that is just, just like standing up, you know, leaving my house, you know, leaving the room for a little bit, coming back and like reading something with a, a, a fresh pair of eyes. And this is a way to almost like, um, to give yourself like a hard reboot. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about for sure. And I think that, you know, drugs can kind of aid in that sometimes, but also so can a walk around the block for sure. So, um, yeah. And, and I think different times of the day too, like, you know, you're, you're, you perceive things differently when you first wake up than you do right before you go to bed, you know? So, I think it's good to, you know, keep going back to your work and being like, you know, as I'll, I'll often even just, even if I'm not being self-critical, if I'm in an early part of the process of demoing or whatever, I'll still come back to it and I'll change one word or whatever, you know? I don't want to get like too far into the sort of like Joe Rogan-y drug talk, but I, you, I, I'm, I'm just really sort of curious for like, for my own edification as somebody who has dealt with like just a lot of anxiety my, my entire life you you did ketamine therapy is that right i did actually yeah how did you know that you mentioned it or wrote about it somewhere okay well i did do that and and i i i found it i think it was good for me actually how so well i i I think it just it helped to make me a little more like um a little more resilient and not 
you know, not as easy to, to get discouraged and dark. Um, you know, I don't think it was like a permanent fix. I think I, I did it like a bunch of times, you know, um, and I think it could be something that really just to sort of stay in the light, you would have to do it like once a week or once every two weeks or something like that. Um, but it's too expensive for me for that. But, um, yeah, I think, I think it's a good, it's a good therapy. And a lot of people talk about, of course, mushrooms and I've never really done those in that way so much, but, um, I like the idea. I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not a drug guy. I mean, I just smoke weed really, you know, are you talking about depression specifically? Yeah. And, and yeah. And anxiety, you know, just, just, just like, just like rotten mind <laughs> or whatever. Or just think thinking too much, you know, too, too much in your head. Where's that poop, Marzi? I lost it, dude. I lost the damn poop, man. There are worse things in the world. Oh my God. I know with these, these people here. All right. We got to do it. This, all right. We're not, look, this is like a first for me. And like, I find other, other dog shit over here all the time. So yeah, I woke up this morning. There was just a giant pile of dog shit out in front of my house. And, you know, let it be known on this podcast. I walked around with the bag for a full seven minutes to try to find this thing. I think maybe what you were getting at. And, and again, this is something that I, I really, really connect to on a deep level is the thing about, this applies to anxiety, this applies to depression, this applies to probably a lot of other things that it's really, um, is that you spiral and that it's sort of like, a, it's, it's almost like self perpetuating, you know, that, that the, the more you get into your own head, the worse, the worse it gets. And maybe, maybe this is a way for you to kind of like, I don't know, almost like shake yourself out of it. I think so. Yeah. I think, and I think that's what, these different kinds of drugs do is they kind of, you know, or, or even SSRIs or something. Yeah. They kind of, you know, I mean, we're being very metaphorical of course, but like, yeah, that they kind of, um, you know, yeah. Shift you out of those networks. They talk about the laying down fresh snow, you know, on, on like tracks that you've been in for a long time and, 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 and allowing you to sort of create new tracks, you know, is your work better when you are just in a better state of mind I, i'm not sure i mean I, I would think that i think that i'm more able to see clearly i think i think that and again this harkens back to what we talked about earlier about feeling cringy about about old old work and stuff like that um i think that not only is a less you know depressed less anxious mind state um desirable for those obvious reasons, but I think it, it's, it's like clearer. I think it's clearer and you're more able to see like what, what is the honest idea, you know, and what's the contrived idea? Um, you know, what's, what's the natural voice, you know, and, and what's something you're putting on. Um, so I, and even literally that, but metaphorically that and literally that, um, voice i mean so yeah i think i i think i think that certainly having being able to think more clearly or or not being depressed you know and anxious and you know and fearful and all that stuff you, you know being able to think more clearly you could you know you also think more clearly about your work you know what i mean and and what what what's honest and what's not for sure Classic air is a vacuum where you are not And I'm a can of coke flattened by a thousand cars How strange to be strangers after what we were